Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to show you guys some boas I haven't shown very much in my previous videos. These are my Aikido's Peruvian True Red Tail Boas. And I've shown a lot of my Pacalpa Boas. You know, I've had a litter last year. I'm hoping for some babies in a few months from my Gravid Pacalpa. Uh, but I haven't shown my Aikido's very much. So I got this trio of farm-raised Aikido's uh, Peruvian boas back in 2017. These were born in 2016 and I've been growing them up and I was just doing my weekly maintenance and I noticed all three of them had shed and they were looking really really beautiful. I mean these animals have really developed nicely. Uh, this is the female and I thought I'd show you her first because she really nicely shows the features of the Iquitos locale. And I'll say up front, I'm not entirely convinced that the Iquitos locale is a distinctive type of locality separate from the Pacalpa. Um, I've seen Iquitos animals that have a lot of different looks and to me it seems like the variety of animals from Iquitos is just as great as that from Pacalpa and there's not really a difference. Um, you know, I've discussed this in my previous videos. There's also the fact that Peruvian boas are brought in from many, many miles around where they're collected in the rainforest and they're just exported out of Iquitos and Pacalpa so they don't necessarily come from those cities. So that being said, I will say that this animal really embodies the Iquitos look and so she's got this nice kind of pale bright lemony yellow uh, ground color and she's got these real nice dark inky black saddles they just have this inky look not quite sure how to describe inky but this is the inky look it looks almost like ink like ink linked out of a pen and that's what forms her saddles you can see she's got this nice bright red tail um, I think my Iquitos animals tend to have a little bit longer and redder of a tail than the Pacalpa. But again, as I said, I don't really believe that there's that much of a difference. So it's, it's a very subtle difference. So I got these animals uh, back in 2017. And you can see she's probably about five, five and a half feet now. So she's really developing nicely. I imagine she'll be ready to breed next year. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to breed them next year, but you know, we'll see. But she's looking really nice. These guys are now eating large and extra large rats about every three weeks or so. And you know, just a beautiful, gorgeous animal. I don't know if you can see, but this animal has the really the coolest markings on her head. She's got these smudges on the top of her head, but they're kind of symmetrical. Really cool look. She's also got quite a bit of like orangey blushing to her sides. I'll show you my male in a sec who's really got that, but you know, real gorgeous animal. The other thing I like about these guys is they're kind of wild. I mean, they're, I don't have any wild caught animals. These are farm raised, so they're about as close to wild caught as I have, but they definitely are a little more, um, I don't want to say high strung, but they're, you can feel that they're wild. They're not domestic animals. It's not like holding a call albino or a jungle boa or something like that. I mean, you get to feel that this is a wild animal. And I haven't been bitten by them. I think they've struck at me a few times, but they seem to be a little calmer now. At least this female is. You know, then again, I don't really handle her a lot. I'm not trying to tame them. You know, just like to try to preserve that nice wild look uh, in these Aikidos Peruvian red tail boas. And this is my male Aikidos Peruvian. This guy actually just took a swipe at me, so. I have him kind of at arm's length, hopefully he'll cooperate. You can see this guy is distinctively different looking from the female. You know, he's got a darker brown color, it's kind of a beautiful golden brown color. And his saddles are a little blockier than the female. You know, but what characterizes this guy is he's got this beautiful peach orange lateral stripe. You know, just a gorgeous looking animal, very high contrast. You can see his head markings are a little bit cleaner, he's got the classic eyelash markings and then a long red tail you know there I, there's a beam up here my snakes are always trying to climb up to the beam I gotta hold him away so he doesn't uh, tag me there but gorgeous animal um, I probably if I do breed next year I'll probably pair this guy up with the female and as I mentioned these are farm raised animals from exported out of Aikido so I have the CITES documents that show Aikido as the exportation 
support. And you know what farm raised means is there could be a number of things. They can either maintain adult boa constrictors in their uh, habitat of origin and down in Peru in pens and ba so basically they breed outdoors in these pens and they collect the babies every year. Or sometimes they'll take um, gravid females from the wild and they'll put them in the pens and when the babies are born they'll be exported. Sometimes the females are exported also. And so this guy is just a cool look and you know I mentioned I wasn't really that keen on the whole Iquitos versus Pacalpa thing. I think it's kind of a marketing scheme. And in looking at this guy, this guy looks completely different from that female. You know, he's, he's uh, just as cool looking. You know, not quite as classic what you might picture in a keto Peruvian boa. You know, but a real beautiful animal. And you know, I'm hoping I can breed and really bring out this orange stripe. I've, I saw some pictures of some Iquitos Peruvians that Gus Renfro had, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. And they had this beautiful orange side to them. You know, so the orange color was really brought out. So hopefully, maybe in a few generations, I can have a line of Peruvians that just really brings out that orange color. Uh, and this guy, you know, just a little more wild than the female, but he seems to be behaving right now. You know, he hasn't drawn any blood. And of course, you know, they got the beautiful speckled bellies as uh, most Peruvian boas, Peruvian true red tail boas have. So I have one more Quitos Peruvian boa. And this guy is actually another male. You know, it's kind of an interesting story. I had bought a trio that was described as two females and a male. And they came and I did my, you know, palpitation to feel the hemipenes. Turns out that both of the animals that were pictured and advertised in the ad as females were males, including this guy. And then the one animal that was advertised as a male was a female, which was the first labo I showed you. And, uh, you know, not quite sure how this happens. I know missexing can happen sometimes, and typically, you know, you get an animal that was described as a female, it turns out to be a male. But in this case, it wasn't one animal that was missexed, it was all three. Because uh, they were all inconsistent with the, just the, the labeling on the ad. So I was a little annoyed about that, obviously. Um, you know, and I actually, I thought about selling this guy, the extra male. Um, but I, you know, he was such a cool looking animal. I decided to keep them and I'm really glad that I did. You know, it's always good to have extra males and this guy has such a unique look. He's definitely different from the other two. You can see his saddles are almost peaked looking. He's got a little bit of orange on his side and he's got this lighter um, color than the, the male I just showed you. More lemony yellow, not quite as pale yellow as the female, but this kind of golden lemony yellow. And he's also got a lot of kind of orange peachy uh, overtones on his uh, side and belly. Just a you know beautiful animal. This guy is a little bit calmer than the male I just showed you. Although he's still, I wouldn't describe him as tame. Um, you can see how muscular he is. That rippling muscle there. And these guys are now going on five years old. But uh, they're definitely developed, you know, they're getting this very square body shape to them, as you would expect in an adult true red tail. And the Peruvians definitely have some of the most impressive muscles of any of my true red tail boas. He's really holding on there. You know, definitely not an animal if you want an animal that's not going to squeeze you or you don't want to get a Peruvian true red tail. As I mentioned before, I think that the whole Pacalpa versus Iquitos thing is kind of marketing hype to be honest and I did a video on that in the past so check that one out but you know what I will say is that uh, these three animals all from Iquitos they all have their own distinctive look and I really like that because when I breed them together hopefully I'll get some diversity in my Iquitos Peruvian bloodlines and you know develop some really nice looking boas uh, you know a few generations down the line and although I think it's likely just hype at this point, I'm not planning on crossing these with any of my Pacalpa boas. So I'll just keep them separate because I know that not everybody agrees with me on that. And I want to you know, keep the bloodlines as pure as possible, or not the bloodlines, the localities as pure as possible. Um, so these Iquitos will remain as a separate breeding project. And when I got these animals about five years ago, there were a lot of these farm-raised uh, Iquitos available at very reasonable prices. 
Um, you know, I kind of wish I had bought more of them because they're such cool looking boas and they're not really very uh, easily available now. I heard though that there were a number of shipments back, you know, 2016, 2017, and a lot of them died. There were whole shipments there, you know, I don't know if they were just, you know, improperly packaged or there was something wrong with their health, but lots of the animals died as, you know, you would expect with wild caught animals. Luckily, I seem to have gotten the shipment that was um, more healthy because these animals have been rock solid. You know, I haven't had any health issues with them. They've grown really nicely, no regurgitation, nothing like that. Just really solid animals. And, you know, looking forward to hopefully next year, I'll, I'll pair them up. And, you know, maybe in the summer of 2022, I'll have some Aikidos babies. So I'm still hoping for Percalpa babies this year. And I hopefully got some cooking right now. And these I expect to be born probably around late July, early August. You know, so stay tuned if you're looking to get a Peruvian boa. Um, oh, I don't know if you can see, they have the coolest markings under their chin. Just these really cool, you know, uh, markings. That's a look at my Aikidos Peruvian True Red Tail Boas. I hope this video was helpful and somewhat uh, entertaining. As always, if you have any questions or comments, shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.